Hi guys, good morning. So I am here with Carrie Lee and we are getting her prep going. All I've done so far is remove her color and I'm going to prep her nails for her fill or 30 day manicure, I would do it the same way. Um, so I'm using Pusher, this is actually the Pusher that I sell about 10 bucks. Um, and I don't have any cuticle creams or anything like that on the nail. I know a lot of people um, tend to ask, oh, do you use cuticle cream? And I don't. Um, part of the reason is because I don't want to have um, a problem with any oils or lotions or anything that might get left on the nail. So after I push back, I'm going to use the scraper side and get rid of all the funk. That is the technical word. Tom Holcomb taught me that. I took a class from him like 10 years ago. He's like, get rid of the funk. So that's the technical word. Is the funk. So after a good push, you want to give it a good scrape down. Now there's a lot of debates about the Russian manicure. Um, I use a prep bit on a new nail. I don't really use a prep bit on a, a nail. Um, typically that already has gel on it because of the angle of the gel on the nail and I don't want to create any rings of fire so I haven't been um, I love the idea of the Russian manicure but it also takes a lot of time when you're switching bit to bit to bit to bit to bit so I'm still kind of new in that whole Russian manicure process and until I can master how I like it and the speed of it for every day in the salon. I'm not really gonna talk about that as far as training you guys how I would do it. Um, this is the way that I've done this forever and it yields really good results so clients can go a month without a problem but it's a lot of um, making sure you get in there. See all this stuff? That is what causes lifting so you want to get rid of that. Make sure you're getting into the side walls. Up on the cuticle. Hi, Anna. I'll try to keep an eye on any questions, you guys, if you have any. Okay. So again, push, and then give a good scrape. get in these corners if you ignore the corners that's where you're going to get lifting first um, and so you really want to make sure that you're not ignoring these corners getting all of that out you guys see how much stuff comes out of that it's a lot and you want it gone so very important get all that out give it a quick dust then you can go through with your nippers and very carefully get I mean, this is very like um, controversial. Some people nip things, some people don't. I'm gonna be going around and getting things that are flying up at me. Um, you, it takes some practice and some training and some knowledge to know what you can get at and what you can't. Um, I look for the transparent area and get anything that's hanging out. Um, some people never nip anything. I, I'm not that person. I want it cleaned up. So I will go around and you know, if you're new, you really want to learn what you can get at and what you can't. So over here, you've got this lovely chunk of hangnail hanging out and a bit of callus right there. So be careful with that. I'm going around. She doesn't have a lot like really sticking out. So there's a little bit right there. You guys see that? Isn't that nice? Get rid of that for her. One of the things that will stand, um, make you stand out against people getting their nails elsewhere is how well you clean up what's going on. Um, that's a big chunky callus right there. That's why I went ahead and got rid of a little bit of that. You can use a file or a bit um, to smooth this out. So this is the sanding band that I had. And so if you're really careful, you can actually smooth out the callus just as you would a foot file, and that's going to smooth that out really nicely for the client. So grab a new file, and you can do both hands. 
um, two to work and then do the file. I'm gonna go ahead and just do one hand start to finish and get it ready for product so you guys um, can get on with your day. So that way you guys can see um, the whole process as I'm getting with product. So make sure that when you are removing the edges of your file, you're really getting this well on both sides. Angling both sides, turn it over, angle it both sides using an old file because you don't want anything that can scratch client um, or cut them. All right, so now I'm just very lightly, this is a 100-100 file, but I'm not using a lot of pressure. Um, just very lightly blending in their new growth. So she was a month out, so you can see the growth was down to here basically. So just blend it in really well from side to side. Then using the top of your file, Go around the cuticle. This is why the files are shaped like this. And push that cuticle back as you do it. It's not gonna hurt them, and you wanna make sure this is prepped really well. Um, sometimes when I teach classes, I actually will make my students do this process on me so they can feel it. So if you're attending one of my classes and you wanna feel how I'm prepping and the pressure I'm using, raise your hand and I will do it on you so you can feel the pressure I'm using because it is surprising how light some people are barely touching the nail and you do want to get in there you want to make sure everything is prepped really well if you want to make sure their nails are going to last long term so this is just a slight ballerina shape on her she's not got an extreme ballerina it's just a little bit of a taper again going around blending in your old fill line or your um, gel Gonna thin out the free edge where I shortened it. And do you change the thickness of application of hard gel if there is no art, glitter, or gel polish? I don't. Um, the hard gel layer is the same thickness regardless of whether there's gonna be color versus glitter. Um, the biggest difference is how long their nails are. So if she's wearing them this long, I'll have a little bit of an arch into the nail. As I file it, I won't file off the center of the nail very much. I won't flatten it out on purpose. Um, if it's a short nail, a 30-day manicure short nail, I will make sure that that's almost as thin as I can get it. I won't really leave an arch in there at all because I want um, it to just look more like a natural nail. But when someone's wearing them this long, you want to have a little bit of an arch in there just for strength. But it's still very, very thin. Um, and you can see that there's an arch in there, but it's still a very thin application. Um, when I'm applying the gel, it's not really, sorry, let me move you. Uh, when I'm applying the gel, I'm not really applying it any different from a 30 day manicure. It's really the process as their nails grow out of how much I'm removing and how much I'm leaving and I'm going to leave the center of the nail with an arch in it. So um, when people come in and it's their first time, they typically have quite short nails and they're gonna grow them out or you're going to build them out. Um, if they're growing them out, you've just got a nice thin overlay and as they continue to come in, you're gonna just keep the product towards the center of the nail so that as they go longer, you've got a bit of an arch in there. But it's a gradual thing. You don't need to build an arch on a short nail overlay. Um, but if you are doing a full set, you will need to build an arch. So blending that in, pull the skin from the side, make sure that your shape is how you want it to be. I don't finish file, so I wanna get like my shape all in there during this process. And my prep process, I typically take about half an hour between removing product and um, getting it all prepped. Uh, that gives me half an hour for new product application, color, and art, if they're doing art. Um, so again, looking down the barrel. Thinning out the free edge, because we removed product and so I don't want to have a really thick free edge. I also will hit the bottom of my free edge with my electric file at the end. I talk a lot about the 30-day manicure. Um, the 30-day manicure 
is a process that I developed ages ago, way before shellac and stuff, we had color gel in the pot. And applying it towards the natural nail was fine, but it's very, very, very flexible. And I would have people that would grow their nails out this long with the color gel on it, and then they would get a stress crack right along the middle somewhere. And I would say, okay, well, they wouldn't want to shorten all of their nails, but they didn't have a hard gel on them. They were just a gel manicure with colored gel. So I, what I started doing was applying a patch of hard gel to their nail. And then I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna do a thin coat over the whole nail. And then I would just put the color on it. Well, my client, I, it was one in particular who wore her nails pretty long and she said, can you just put it on all of the nails? Because that nail feels so strong and I love that it feels hard and strong and the other ones still feel really flexible because it's, you know, their own natural nail. So um, I said, sure, I can put it, the hard gel underneath all of them. And at the time it was kind of, it was a big no-no the way that I was doing it because the thickness of the hard gel should crack. Um, for as thin as I do it, if I were just to do that thin of hard gel on the nail, by itself, it would crack. It's, it doesn't have enough flexibility and there was no arch in it. So I remember having a chat with Vicki Peters one night and I'm like, guess what I'm doing? And she's like, you can't do that. And I'm like, but I'm doing it. So what I started figuring out was that it was because we're balancing it with a uh, color gel and the flexibility of the color gel made it strong enough and made it actually extremely strong. So not only were clients able to grow their nails out to whatever length they wanted, um, they were able to go, you know, a month and very unusually will I see a break. So um, it works really well with Accents line of colors because they're solvent free, uh, meaning they're not made with nail polish. So if you smell your gel polish and it smells like nail polish, it's made with nail polish. It's got a solvent in it. It's going to be brittle, it's going to age, and it's not going to maintain flexibility. The Accents colors, both in the pot and in the bottle, the Luxio line, they're both completely solvent free. So they don't age and they maintain their flexibility. So you're able to layer the thin layer of hard gel with the color on top of it and it ha it'll be really strong without having to build an arch. And that way when my clients come in after three to four weeks so this is completely prepped so as clients come in after three to four weeks I'm able to um, remove their color quickly with an e-file and um, prep the thin layer of hard gel again I just kind of smooth it out there's not a lot there it's basically like a base coat and then I just do another thin layer of hard gel and go straight over the top so I'll do another video on that um, and talk about it again. Um, I have some older ones, but I definitely can start over and I'll just create some new ones um, and talk about 30 day manicure again. But I, it, it, it's, I've been doing it for a long time now. Um, like I said, it was before shellac came out when we just had our colored gels in a pot. Um, so this is our UV LED formula, but it was even before we had UV LED formulas when we just had UV colored gels. Um, they're just, they're, they're very, very flexible and they didn't add the hardness that people like to feel. People want to feel that their nails are hard. Um, and so adding that uh, layer of hard gel gives them that hard nail feel. What is the bit that I use to take off the color layer? Um, I just use a coarse sanding band. I don't like the sound of carbides. I'm not a big fan of carbides for the most part. I know there's a lot of people out there that are. Um, and I, I'm not really a big fan of medium sanding bands either because they take longer. And I want to get the color off really quickly without it getting hot. Um, it is, they're, they're a bumpier band, so I'm always on the quest to find a coarse sanding band that's nice and coarse but not super bumpy. Sometimes I'll get some and they are too bumpy, and I'll just hit it with my um, file. I'll just zzz, zzz really quickly on my file, and it'll take whatever, you know, the high bumps that are off, um, off really quickly. But I can get the color off the fastest using a coarse band. Um, so that's what I use. So get in there into the corners. 
Again, you want to get into everywhere you can. And there's a lot of people that will use a bit for this. That's fine. What I find is that, and try this out, but even when you do use a bit, go ahead and take your scraper and go around and see if there's anything left. And I can almost guarantee you that you will still find bits stuck to the nail after you use a prep bit. So um, they're great. I love them on toes. I cannot live without my 459, which is the prep bit that I use on toes. Um, but when it comes to hands, I really like to get in there under that cuticle and scrape it. And so if you use a prep bit, take a scraper after you do it and go around and see if you're still finding stuff, you know, the funk under the nail, because I almost always will still find stuff to scrape out. And so it seems to me almost like a like I'm having to do two jobs if I use a prep bit and then, um, cause I'm still gonna have to use my hand file to do this part cause I'm still gonna have to blend. I'm still gonna have to get it all ready and prepped. And so you use a prep bit and you gotta go back and you still gotta scrape it and you still gotta do everything. So sometimes I'll do it, but I know that in the end I end up having to do almost double the work. How's the length on those feel good? Yeah. yeah. Do you have any questions? No, <laughs> For the I'm class just today. Intrigued <laughs> to all the awesomeness. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just trying to pick out my colors. What to do, the yeah. decision of the day, what the color is going to be. Okay. Holding it up. Looking down the barrel. Like I said, she's just a slight paper, um, not a huge one. What kind of fluffy brushes am I using to remove the dust? Um, this is an old one. I have actually sell them now. I have some really cute ones on my website for just a couple of bucks. Um, and yeah, it's just a fluffy brush. They're like these. Like a little nylon. You can clean them and spray them down and disinfect them pretty easily. This is to remove the dust. Or like with toes, I always use the um, uh, surgical scrub brushes that I carry. And I also give them out. I always give everybody one at Nail Camp. So um, if, you, if you've gotten one from Nail Camp and you wonder where it comes from, I gave it to you. It was my present to you in the Love Nails goodie bag. <laughs> Are they soft? Yeah, they're really soft. They're just a really soft nylon and it's just to help remove the dust. Um, they're a little coarser than this. So this is the soft one from Profiles and these are really, really soft. The ones that I have are a little bit coarser but they're still quite soft. Um, I feel like they get in there a little bit more than the Profiles ones but the Profile ones are great for um, chrome because you don't want to scratch the surface at all when you're dusting for chrome. So I keep that purple one around just for when I have to do the chrome powder stuff. So you want to make sure that if you have a line it's blended. Your fix it um, which is your protein bonder is also going to eliminate any hairline. So if you have a hairline and you feel like, oh, is that gonna go? Is that is that okay? Most of the time it's fine. Just use your fix it. The fix it will slide right into that hairline and it'll disappear. So there's a little trick for a fix it. If you do traditional um, gel manicures where you soak off, but you find that somewhere around the three week mark people have tip separation, use your affix it just on the tip and that will help with any tip separation. So there's a little trick there too. Teresa in Wisconsin. Yeah, I do wanna come and do classes. My husband is actually from Janesville. And so um, next time we go out there, my plan is to do some classes. I've gotta to talk to Accents about that territory and whatnot, but um, I can do classes out there. 
Uh, but we go and visit now and then. So out in Janesville, and I have some of um, some family friends also out in Illinois. So I want to go out there and do some classes kind of around that area for you guys. Okay, thin that out. And always remember, use the top of your file and get in here and prep really good around the cuticle. All right. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is clean her up and um, get her fill on and get her color. So we will catch you guys later. Thanks for joining this morning. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, Anna. Bye, Teresa. Bye, whoever else is stalking the video and is out saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> there is my complete prep. Um, well, actually, I want to get in here. Sometimes I'll notice when I'm even applying product that I missed a spot and I'll come back and get it because I want to make sure people walk out with perfectly groomed nails and getting up to the cuticle really well and getting anything that's flying around gone is important. Make sure there's nothing over here. Yeah, and you guys should um, look into coming to nail camp. It's not very far. You guys are, you know, Wisconsin isn't very far. Jump on a plane. Come to nail camp. It's nwnailtechs.com, and it's four days of nails. So you're not getting one class, but you're getting classes all weekend, picking brains, and having fun with other nail techs. So look into that. And we will catch you guys later. Bye. Thanks.